Beautiful people, welcome back to Pharma Freak. It is Wednesday, the 28th of June. It is time to pick up our day old chicks. Now, to cut the whole story short, I did want to show you from transportation from Douala right to Limbe, guys. So, this is we. We've arrived, Pharma Freak. Uh, we went in for 37 cartons, which come in 51 chicks per carton. Of course, you know the extra one is just a bonus, it's a gift. Normally, it should be 50 per carton, okay? So that will sum up to around 1,830 something, okay? Uh, yeah, I really wanted to have 2,000, but uh, I didn't have. Uh, I'm thankful. I'm grateful for this number. So you can see how healthy these guys are looking. Remember, if you've been watching my previous videos, one of the tips I used to tell you about... Uh, raising uh day old chicks is that your brooder must have been prepared okay if you watched my previous video now one thing you also want to do once you arrive your farm if you didn't do this from where you picked up your day old chicks which i advise you do that there is to count individual cartons if the number is correct or if there are some that bet in there you can have the time to change it there okay so one thing about brooding day or chicks is just about the temperature right now remember we should be at from day one we should be at 31 degree to 33 degrees that's from day one to day three okay so what we have just now is 27 which is not enough we are going to be adding the heat now we went in for a good a good pre-starter feed to kick start them up goodly now you can also see we have our anti-stress because uh driving for a distance of like an hour 30 minutes they must have stressed up so you want to start them off with an anti-stress with a good feed to kick start their metabolism guys now you can see we have all these ready we have spread them and uh we are going to be lighting our fire uh, just really soon in order to add up the heat. So this is what I do. I count them again. Two, 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 two. I should have something like 25 and then plus an extra one to make sure that we have 51 per carton, okay? And uh, doing this exercise on this batch, I found out that yes, we got 51 for about 80% of the cartons. 51 some were shot by two some were shot by one some were over by two or three so it compensates the short uh, cartons right so that is just how things work okay so these guys have traveled for like two hours but they are still looking healthy plus when they get their anti-stress they are just going to be fine plus a good uh, temperature of their brooder good feed good water availability of water all around them that is what you need guys for a good startup brooding right so we're just gonna do this count individual cartons and before you know it we must have had all of them in the brooder and you're gonna be seeing how they are kicking up their first day of brooding and i'm going to be bringing you much more result as we uh, proceed okay so you want to stick around now excitedly we only lost four i would say five birds okay five birds uh, from picking up to arriving the farm you can see them just there five birds only which from my experience it is really really awesome it is really really minimal okay now you can see we have spreaded our guys in there you can see how healthy they are looking well you can tell that the temperature is good when you see them evenly spread it that way uh, when you see them by the wall side it tells us another thing right so you can see our guys they have access to an anti-stress the moment we unbox them they have access to feed the moment we unbox them and then we also have our heat source there during the day we don't normally use our heat bulbs those bulbs you see there they are 100 watt and uh, when we light them it really compensates the heat okay so for now we are going in with our wood with our fire which uh some people have been asking isn't the smoke a problem uh, but I don't think the smoke is a problem to the birds, okay? Yeah, too much of it too is not good, right? You just want to keep an eye. So you can see 
we had to uh, split the brooder into two so as to make the heat accumulate uh, so that we don't waste much heat right so we are going to be blocking partitioning this with a tarpaulin very soon and then you're gonna be seeing that what will happen is that our temperature will increase we are going to save more on uh, charcoal or on electricity or on firewood right so these guys are already on they are feeding they are drinking you just want to keep an eye for weak birds you want to keep an eye for tired birds uh, such birds you can individually pick them up and uh, help them to drink from the ancestors help them to feed help them uh, remember these guys are just like your babies okay from day old you know what to do with babies right that is just what brooding is all about right you just want to be there once you unbox them uh, they have all the need leave them for like two hours and then come back to check for signs of weakness signs of tiredness right uh, check your temperature if it is good uh, there, there are several ways to tell if your temperature is good or not first when you see them evenly spread it it tells you that the temperature is good but when you see them by the wall side it also tells you uh, something different right which you want to watch my previous videos I have a video explaining uh, detailedly about temperature and how to uh, maintain an adequate temperature for your brooder right so for me what I'm seeing just now the guys are doing fine they are evenly spread it they are drinking they are feeding and they are jumping around right we are just gonna give them like two hours and then come back later right now the wood i'm going in for this is a rainy season uh, rainy season uh, we have some small challenges with wood most of which are very wet but again it all boils down to preparation right preparation you must have acquired your wood one week before leave it to dry and things like that right it's all about preparation but we are going to be making sure that the temperature rises to 31 to 33 degrees right so we even have even 37 degrees 39 degrees but then you have to observe their behavior signs of tiredness signs of uh, uh whatever which you can tell from their behavior right okay you can see what is happening just now from day old guys you want to keep an eye look at this one accidents can happen can occur in your brooder so that is why you don't just want to throw in your bird and then go and get a bottle of beer no you don't want to do that you want to be present there see what is happening there help them to uh to be accommodated right remember they are just like newborn babies you're bringing them into this world and you have a responsibility to make sure that they are comfortable especially in their new home which you call brooder right so you want to go around as much as you can help the weak bird to drink help the weak bird to to feed right because there are so many weak birds when it comes to day old you can see this one just now this one is weak this one is lame uh the eyes are even closed you can see right there with such a bed you have to separate you should have an emergency uh section where you uh keep these kind of birds you group them and then you can later pay more attention to them you can see me attending to the bird the eyes are now open right that is what caring is all about to your birds right so i'm just going to separate this flock from the others and then i'm going to pay more attention to eat right okay i'm gonna be coming back later for eat so we just keep going we just keep going around checking them signs of weakness checking them if there is a special need uh, a special need yeah beds also have special need and things like that going around checking the te temperature making sure it is adequate to what we need for day one to day three okay and then making sure that other things are put in place another thing is drinkers and feeders shouldn't be far away from the bird you want to make that available all around the brooder right that is to help them to feed more 
and to drink more. Uh, if you can achieve that, because you have a responsibility, you have a goal to achieve within 24 hours to 48 hours, you should make sure to test their cube. I, did I pronounce it correctly? Their cube, uh, I, I didn't demonstrate that, but you, if they have really fed for 24 hours, you should make sure to have achieved at least 80% of your entire flock to have fed very well, and you will see their cube under the neck, uh, it will tell you that uh, they have really eaten, and uh, that is a good start, okay? Some people might achieve this within 48 hours, okay? But whatever it is, you wanna pick like randomly 50 birds uh, after 24 hours, pick randomly 50 birds and check for their coop. If their coop is filled with feed, uh, some is hard, some is soft, but you should be able. So you can see we are right now at 30. We are increasing the temperature. We are increasing. So we should be around 31 to 33 to be good for the first three days, okay? Remember, it is temperature that really, really help these guys to stay comfortable, okay? Temperature versus ventilation. So we are going to be blocking and partitioning this place. The reason why our temperature is still down because we haven't partitioned it. Once we do that, we are going to achieve the, the maximum temperature we need. Now, remember, you shouldn't joke with your uh, biosecurity. Now we do this every time. You can see the bigger pen right there. We have thoroughly cleaned it and it has been down like this for like two weeks, well disinfected, making sure that we are waiting for these guys. Once they are out of the brooder, we are sending them there. Now assessing this brooder, not everyone gets in this brooder, okay? I'm taking my biosecurity very seriously this time around because I have experienced from my past badges, I've experienced some, some lapses and uh, which led us to, to, to higher mortalities, right? So what I'm just gonna be doing just now is I'm going to be putting some disinfectant right there. Anyone assessing the brooder, we are just two of us here, me and one of my worker, we are responsible for this brooding. No one else should be assessing, but even at that, we have to disinfect our legs before we enter. I recommended you Vicon for my last video. I'm not doing a promo for them, just what I use to be powerful. My mentor recommended this to me and I'm recommending it to you too. So I just need a spoon and a half of Vicon and then put some water and then put it in the hole you saw just now by the door. So anytime we want to assess the Buddha, we must make sure to steep or to dip our feet or our legs in the our feet sorry in there it helps for disinfection right because you don't just want to go out carry whatever bacteria into the brooder you may be harming the birds guys biosecurity is cheap okay compared to the consequences if you don't right again i repeat Biosecurities, these little uh, little actions, they are very cheap compared to the consequences if you don't, right? Okay, remember I've disinfected this brooder like three different times prior to receiving our bird. This is to make sure that we are safe, right? That's just how it is done. You dip your legs, you dip your feet before you access the brooder, okay? This way we know we are safe. The floor is clean, the brooder is clean, and we maintain hygiene and sun. So if you put all of these tips and practices together, then you are at a very good start of brooding your day or chicks, guys. So you wanna stick around this channel because I'm gonna be bringing you the three, uh, the three performance, and then I'm also going to be bringing you the seventh. And as we go along the way, guys, we really hope and we really strive to make this badge the best of the best, guys. So stick around. <laughs> 